Hello everyone, I hope that you are doing well. So without wasting any time, let's move to the newspaper. First we will identify the important news and then we'll move on to the analysis section. So this is Tuesday, April 12, 2022, the Hindu Delhi edition, right? We'll be identifying first the most important news and then we'll go on to analyze each of them separately in the capacity of our examination, right? So we'll be dealing with the news only in capacity of our examination and not anything else fine so without wasting time let's move forward so the first news is Modi pushes for peace as Shahwaz flags Kashmir so let me first congratulate Mr. Shahwaz Sharif to become the Prime Minister of Pakistan and we expect peace from Pakistan as US and Canada are in the same way we want India and Pakistan to be and uh, that's it from my side and let's see what Shahwaz has to say now our Prime Minister has pushed for peace and they have pushed for Kashmir as usual article 370 so they are again in the same lines so this is not very important news yes they should have been a bit mature but what can be done Ukraine dominates Modi Biden talk will give it a very a very brief read it was expected thing and there isn't any more news important on this page neither on this page okay uh-huh on this page, let's see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, nothing here as well. Okay. Okay, this is an important news. Orissa. Barbara Forest set for ecotourism push. Fine. Uh -huh. uh, there is nothing much here. Procure paddock with uh, no no. Microplastic in cavity may be harming fishes. Yes, this is important again. Okay. Nothing here. Nothing here. It's time to read sleeping dogma lie those attempt to hindi imposition must not note that language should be instrument of opportunity not of operation not required clinging on Imran Khan showed himself as an autocrat by undermining democracy process not required in pandemic shock critical lesson for msme very important msme itself is very important and these are the article will be talking about critical lesson i expect a lot from this article for my examination point of view right Weighing on choices, opening of third dose for our 18 is a positive step. Yes, yes. India, UK, crafting a new legacy. Despite the challenges, India, UK relationship has been on upward at Okay, state of adolescent learning. Asar highlights the dismal picture of online education. We have to say this. Online education is a very hot topic now. We have to say this. Uh huh. Text amending the weapon of mass destruction act yes we'll give a read to this gist and if necessary the entire article canada mandatory for ug courses okay uh, we'll give a read to this gist how it is made mandatory and all those things right the art and science of good is interview who is this alok ranjan i don't know about him at least tell tell me when he joined is okay he's an is of 1978 but fine we'll give it a very brief read because interview is a hot topic now and everyone is uh, talking about it so maybe he is also there to give his viewpoints that's good at least people are coming forward to give us viewpoint okay mm -hmm. nine held in Gujar. no not required not required mm -hmm. Okay. Engineers another held in Bihar bridge. <laughs> this is a very funny incident that a bridge has been stolen in Bihar. Okay. <laughs> the entire bridge and that too in, in bright daylight. They have stolen the bridge. <laughs> Ravi Haldu. Okay, okay. Nothing here. Mm, let's see. Uh, if any ideas that judges appoint judges wrong, says CJ. Okay, we have to see this. What is the exact idea behind this? 
Niti puts out energy and climate indexes again very important. National doctor body rights to PM okay. D2 issue Aadhaar to those on final NRC list. Mm -hmm. Bengal nowadays is in uh, every two or three days I find news of violence in Bengal. I don't understand why the law and order situation is so low in Bengal right now. Right. The government should do something for this. Reading for offensive in East. China says change in Pak. Leadership will not affect ties obviously. Because China is giving money and Pakistan is taking money, so it won't. It would have been opposite if there has been a change in China's uh, Chinese leadership. Then we have to see what happens. Campaign against Li Pen. Not required. Not required. Mm -hmm. Forty percent spectrum price cut. Not required at this time. Okay. Mm. Okay, Gujarat is first defeat, favorites against struggling CSK, no not required, no nothing big here and on this page also I don't see many much news. So yes, we are done with the identification section, now let's go to the analysis section, right? So Ukraine dominates Modi Biden talk, right? Uh, yes, this was expected that the, on it could be on this only consultation with India to continue says US president yes you have to consult us you don't have any choice because the entire world now understands your politics and your warmongering nature Prime Minister Narendra Modi and uh, Joe Biden met virtually fine during a 2 plus 2 foreign and defense ministerial dialogue with US counterpart the war between Russia and Ukraine featured promin uh, prominently in the opening remarks of both the government uh, read out of the meeting said two leaders has discussed Ukraine as well as regional and global issues including COVID-19 pandemic, the global economy, climate and recent developments in the South Asia and Indo-Pacific region. Oh, fair enough. Speaking to reporters on briefing call, a senior US administration officer said development in Sri Lanka and Pakistan has been touched on but not discussed in a detailed manner. Okay. Just know it. There is nothing much to very keenly discuss about. Right. And as I said, the same Pakistan will still sing the same song of Kashmir, Kashmir and Article 370. I don't understand when they will start to, when the public will start to ask for industrialization, for development, for peace. They are just talking only of one thing that is Kashmir. They don't want to be developed and due to them, the entire subcontinent is unstable. Fine. Okay. They are not even malaria free, uh, malaria free, uh, sorry, uh, polio free. Okay. Let's move to the next one. Is there anything? No, there isn't. Is there anything? No, there isn't. Okay. There was some news regarding Odisha. Yes, here it is. Odisha Barbara Forest for set for ecotourism push. Let's let's give it a read. Barbara Forest is in Odisha. This is the first point to remember from this one. Set for ecotourism push. Dubbed as Asia's largest teak and sal forest, look, it is Asia's largest teak and sal forest. The Barbara forest in Orisha was perhaps the only forest in India guarded by Jawans of San CRPF. It will soon be opened for public from next tourism session. Okay, the government is ready, uh, readying the infrastructure to bring the natural forest on ecotourism map. Three cottages have been constructed and other facilities are being created for tourism to enjoy the scenic landscape that holds a number of natural streams dense teak forest and suitable uh, is suitable for trekking okay spread over 870 square kilometers the forest touches three districts three districts and as per legend it is named after british officer's wife who was killed in a tiger attack in the area 100 odd years ago okay the dense teak forest about 150 kilometers from bhuvaneswar led to a flourishing timber market in Bhuvaneshwar, Beharampur, Katak and Nayangar. Naya Nayagar. So it is said that timber mafia worked in tandem with the locals, prompting for former Chief Minister Biju Patnaya to seek deployment of CRPF. The Barbara landscape under Khodra Forest Division is in rich area that boasts that several century old plant sown by British back in 1910. 
the crp of progens has instilled fear in mind of timber smugglers and immediate destruction of precious teak treasure was contained though crpf deployment in babra was initially for 3 years but given the continued threat from the timber mafia the state government kept extending it according to sources crpf wanted to withdraw the babra barbara forest due to its commitment in other part of the state where maoist violence was on rise okay once the state government deployed orissa special striking force the crpf withdraw in 2016 according to report about 1000 timber smugglers were arrested and some is around the forest area was shut down okay so we continue to raise awareness among joint forest management committee to stop tree felling and inform about movement of tree, uh, timber smugglers okay so two three things need to be remembered barbara forest is asia's largest teak and sal forest fine it is in odisha and touches three district and it is good for trekking so i request you all to go and trek there right if you are near to it or wait for some time and have it in your list of places to visit aha uh-huh. okay microplastic in kaveri river may be harming fishes says a iasc study aha uh-huh. so what is microplastic plastics of scale less than equals to 10 to power minus 6 meters right they are often found in nano scales going backward to krishna raja sagar dam and having fried fish on bank of kaveri river but in recent time he has been noticing physical deformities so physical deformities in some of the fishes and began to wonder whether it has something to do with the quality of water so the new study reveals that pollutants like microplastic may be causing growth of defect in fishes including skeletal deformities in kaveri river water is essential for everyone including animals and plants when it is polluted it is capable of causing disease including cancer said a phd student of professor nakthumba lab okay they conducted a comprehensive study of pollution in the krs dam krishna raja sagar dam and it is on kaveri river right so this is a good thing you must know this krishna raja sagar dam is on kaveri river and its potential effect on fishes they collected water samples from three different location with varying speed of water flow fast flowing slow flowing and stagnant so they collected samples from these three since water speed is known to affect the concentration of pollutants why they have collected from three things three of them three different speed of water because water speed is directly related to affect the concentration of pollutants okay in the first part of the study the team analyzed physical and chemical parameters of water samples all but one parameters were within prescribed limits the exception and the exception was dissolved oxygen do means what if dissolved oxygen is not in the not in the expected limits okay it was much lower than needed to be the sample collected from if it is much lower then it indicates very high pollution okay water from these sites has also microbes such as these one cyclops daphnia fi uh, cyphrogi ya yeah, uh, cyphro gira cyphro chaita e coli well known bio indicators of water contamination yes this is correct as we see uh, low de- uh, dissolved oxygen it simply means that water is contaminated there is no there is no uh, there is no second opinion about it because the oxygen in the um, water is being used by whom is being used by these these organisms only right using a technique called raman spectroscopy yes the team detected microplastic minute pl- uh, pieces of plastic of 10 often de- uh, divisible uh, invisible to naked eyes okay but spectroscopy reveals them and toxic chemical containing the cyclohexyl functional group okay microplastics are found in several household and in industrial products and chemical containing the cyclohexyl group such as cyclohexyl iso cyanate and commonly used in agriculture and pharmaceutical industry so this one remember the name cyclohexyl iso cyanate is used in pharmaceutical industries as well as agriculture right in the second part of the study they investigated whether pollution in water could account for development of abnormalities in wild fishes or not they treated embryos of well known model organism zebra fish with water samples collected from three sites and found that those exposed to water from slow flowing and stagnant site experiences skeletal deformities dna damage early cell death 
heart damage increased mortality these defects were seen even after microbes were filtered out suggest, suggesting that microplastics and cyclohexyl functional groups are responsible for ailment of the fish so what does it suggest it suggested that microplastics and cyclohexyl functional group are responsible for ailments in the fish okay the researchers also found unstable molecules called ros reactive oxygen species in the cell of the fish that developed abnormality and whenever we find we i have read it in i think two science uh, two weeks ago in a science page that ros reactive oxygen species leads to what it leads to abnormality in the cell as millions of people are dependent on kaveri river water and recent study from netherland has shown that microplastic can even uh, enter the blood stream of humans yes 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 this is true uh, about two weeks only uh, in that same article in for which i am talking about ros in the same article it was also shown that uh, microplastics is found in the blood of the human although it is not it was not very certain that it would go and get deposited in the tissues but yes the probability cannot be ruled out it may get settled there right so uh, and we in this article we observed that a lot of microplastic and cyclohexyl uh, cyclohexyl iso uh, group is present in water so it can lead to micro uh, plastic entering our blood stream and may lead to their deposition in our tissues and which may have what may have i think it uh, it will have to a larger extent carcinogenic carcinogenic effects right the concentration we have reported may not be alarming yet for human but long term effects can't be ruled out this is also the thing that long term effect cannot be ruled out for them okay so this is a very serious issue this is a case study as well case study as well write it down in your copy for this case study fine okay now let's move to the next page and see if anything important can be identify uh, can be discussed okay nothing here as usual we discuss the editorial at last okay and then we move on to this page text and context mm mm-hmm. so there was nothing on this pages let me see if i can yes there was two news on this page ideas that judges appoint judges is wrong okay says the chief justice of india let us give it a read government takes final call for president okay so idea that judges appoint judge is wrong fine let's see the impression that judges appoint judges in india is wrong it is a government which finally appoints the judges in name of the president of india the head of our state okay so who finally appoints the judges the na- uh, the government in name of the president chief justice said chief justice was in conversation with us supreme court judge justice on uh, comparative approaches of supreme court of the world's largest and oldest democracy there is an impression that in india judges appoint judges it is a wrong impression and i want to correct that the appointment is done through a lengthy consultative process many stakeholders are consulted the executive is one of the key stakeholder he explained that how once a proposal was made of a name as a high court judge the state government the high court and the governor concerned all take measure of the candidate yes this is correct the center vets the name thoroughly before the file is sent to the supreme court then the top 3 judges of the supreme court would examine the proposal based on the inputs given by all the stakeholders they very importantly take the opinion of the consultee judge a supreme court judge hailing from the state or earlier worked in the particular high court for which the name was proposed for many people may not be aware of this only after taking into account wide range of opinions from diverse sources the collegium forms its opinion most of the time it is unanimous opinion i do not think a selection process can be more democratic than this the chief justice of india said this okay it is a view point of chief justice chief justice of india and it is to a much extent correct also although the opacity in collegium is uh, one of the factor that has created such a uh, wrong impression right okay now let's see the next thing niti puts out energy and climate index risk uh-huh gujarat has topped the list for largest state in niti ayog state energy and climate index around 1 that has ranked state and uts on six parameters including discoms performance energy efficiency and environmental sustainability in six these three are there also the state has been categorized based on size 
and geographical differences as larger and smaller states and UP. The index is based on 1920 data. Gujarat, Kerala and Punjab have ranked as top 3 performers in the category of larger state. Jharkhand, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh bottom 3. Goa emerged as top performer in smaller state followed by Tripura and Manipur. Among UTs, Chandigarh, Delhi and Daman Dew are at top performers. Punjab was the best performer in discom performance while Kerala topped in access affordability and reliability category. Haryana best in clean energy and Tamil Nadu in energy efficiency. The state energy and climate index is the first index that aims to track the effort made by the state and UT in climate and energy sector. These parameters have been devised keeping in mind India's goal for climate change and clean energy transmission. The report said, okay. It is said that SECI state energy and climate index is the first step in the journey where state can explore and benchmark themselves on various parameters. For instance, in terms of energy efficiency, Tamil Nadu and Maharashtra have done well, while in terms of discount performance, two small UTs, Dadar and Nagar Hameli and Daman and Diu have done well. Nothing that for a few state, data for a few indicators are not available. Not, we must, it must be noted that for a few state, data for few indicators are not available, which has also affected the overall ranking of the state. And report said, data update and validation needs to be a priority of state government going forward to help them to design better politics. Okay, so just know this fact that uh, state clean, a state energy and climate index has been released by Niti Aayog and it has six categories focusing on including discom performance. Okay, right, fine, fine, fine. So after that, we go to the next page. I don't think there is anything else on this page and on this page there is nothing and uh, I think same was the case on this page as well and then we have the sports page. So with this uh, we come to end of this analysis of news and we move on to analyze the editorial now. Okay. So this is our article in pandemic shock critical lessons for MSMEs. Okay. So we will analyze this article. And let's see what we can learn for our answers from these articles. Okay, so so what is MSME? Medium is uh, micro, small, and medium enterprises, right? Apart from suitable government policies, okay. So one of the requirement is suitable government policies. The management of small businesses must think of financial step safety net. So what should the management of such small businesses MSMEs should think of financial safety net? So they should make their financial safety a more robust. Okay, they should make it more robust. It's not that they should be just waiting for government to do the things for their financial safety. They should make it more safe by themselves. Okay, so let us just give it a read. MSME are very critical for achieving overall objective of economic development. We know what are MSME. They are silent engine of growth. Okay, of our economy. Okay. Uh -huh. The sector is, is a significant contributor in terms of industrial output, obviously. So, significant contributor in terms of industrial output, employment generation, and share it gross domestic product and export. But despite many initiatives by government since independence, the sector has been facing challenges in its quest for survival and growth. The COVID-19 pandemic has further exposed the vulnerabilities of MSME sector. During the pandemic, the sector was among the worst hit on account of demand and supply shocks caused by the measures taken later to curb the spread of infection. Yes, true. The sector is still struggling to survive and recover from pandemic-induced shock. Okay. Now, pandemic's deep in impact. What was the impact of pandemic? Let us focus on the impact of COVID-19 on MSMEs. A recent studies has shown that mm -hmm. as a primary survey of 225 small firms located in NCR and Uttarakhand observed that turnover of around 90% of small firms has declined in fiscal year 2020-21. Around 53% of firms 
faced more than 50% decline in their turnover. Around 29% of them reported a collapse of their business. 53% observed decreased demand in uh, decrease in demand, while 36% faced erratic supply of raw materials. So, at every stage of this supply chain, means one, two, three, four. Let's say this is the raw material stage. This stage is production. This stage is marketing, and this is actual sale. So, at every stage, there has been a challenge, and for some people, it was so challenging that they have to close the establishment altogether. Right. The main reason for the fall in turnover included restrictions on economic activities and mobilities. Yes, this was the lockdown means decrease in demand because the net consumption income or the net income at hand of the public of the consumer got decreased, or uh, and whatever was left got diverted to medicine and hospitalization. Sources of raw material were short. Why? Because economic activities were stalled in that time. Restrictions on trade. Yes, slow recoveries of market. payment delays and labor shortage among others so these are the in general these are problems of msme and pandemic did what pandemic led to more increase in this uh, challenges for the msmes okay these firms faced 25% reduction in their employment particularly in formal worker segment that stood at around 47% major challenges faced by the firm in the revival included delayed payment issues reduced demand lack of financial resources so what was the major challenge faced by the firms again delayed payment issue look these are what these are supply side constraint okay supply side constraints now let me change the pen color for better visibility to red supply side constraints right and now delay in payment issue reduced demand lack of financial resources supply chain disruption increased cost of production lack of skill worker most importantly business uncertainty these are what both institutional plus demand side challenges right okay although most of the firms were aware about initiative under atmanirbhar virus package only half of them found it to be of any help given their lack of demand and business uncertainties firms do not find it rational to avail financial assistance available under atmanirbhar bharat package so this was one of the reason of why atmanirbhar bharat was not taken because of the viability of the business and uncertainty of the business look in pandemic time business would run or not it was the main concern of the proprietor and in that case if he takes a loan or something and the business fails then how he will be able to pay back the loan was a real issue so any uh, they were um, for the time being they were dodging any kind of financial assistance right a majority of firms suggested that government should ha- have been more focused on creating revival of demand for production services okay lessons for resilience nevertheless not all firms have suffered due to pandemic induced recession around 10% of the firm under the study has either a rise in their turnover or reported no change the key sector that operated included human health activities obviously manufacture of pharmaceuticals medicinal chemical and bio botanical product food and beverage service activities manufacture of apparel etc the owners of these firms also reported that they tried try, uh, tried to quickly adapt to use the e-commerce platform and even switch to other business activities that had demand that is production of mask sanitizer home delivery so what happened either they adapted to use the e-commerce platform and even switch to the other business activity that were beneficial or that had demand during those times for example production of mask sanitizer home delivery products etc they exploited the opportunity using their own savings to invest in the area that offered new opportunities so investment came from the private saving and not from the government expenditure right this highlights that a firm resilience depends upon financial resources and ability to invest in new technology or business opportunities so what does it indicate this highlights that a firm resilience depends upon financial resources and ability to invest in new technologies or business opportunity this is a very important concept to be and to understand that any firm will survive based on its own private investment and not on anything else if they have the economy to survive they will survive else they will perish the firms that suffered unlike large firms lacked financial planning for business uncertainties in order to overcome vulnerable shocks planning ahead covid-19 is neither the first pandemic nor it is going to be the last even during the first two decades of the century the world went through some other pandemics right apart from the pandemic there were also factors such as sudden change in government policies wars natural 
and catastrophic uh, natural catastrophes such as flood and drought etc which cause businesses uncertainty so this not only pandemic but government policies wars natural calamities disasters also causes uncertainty in business especially for small business further the bulk of msme are in informal sector which lack registrations and necessary financial documents so bulk of the msme are what thin file client right they are what thin file client and hence they lack necessary financial document to avail such benefit these firms are at great risk of shutting down after large scale disaster or economic shock therefore there is a need to develop a mechanism for msme which should help rescue them from shutting down or support the revival during business uncertainties caused by economic shocks right in order to make msme sector resilient we propose the provision of emergency fund for small businesses that should be made mandatory from the beginning okay so he is talking they are talking about some kind of emergency fund that could be used during such uh, uh, pandemics or such uh, wanting times and that funds should be made mandatory by the government so that each and every of such funds msme right uh, enterprise will have it will have to uh, will have to compulsorily mandatorily keep it aside it is just like a crr or a slr in banking system that helps it to shock uh, that helps it to absorb the shock of npas right okay but one thing the author is missing that most of the as he has mentioned that most of the msmes are what they are unregistered so mandatory provision i think would be not be easy to maintain because government can uh, have the data for only the registered one and registered one say if keeps also then also the major section do not keeps it so this is one of the problem and the solution what i propose is uh, financial inclusion okay there has to be a financial inclusion and then there has to be a registration campaign so that these can be registered and the ones who are not registered need to be deregistered uh, need to be declared illegal so that at least in threat of that also they get themselves registered and in that way they can avail the benefits right similar to public provident fund ppf government can initiate what is called uncertainty corpus fund for a small business this fund can be used to meet the financial need of small farmers okay 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 it may be linked with the turnover of the firm fine hmm. although it would be a forced saving it would be useful for msme although the author believes that yes it would be forcing the msme to uh, it would be like forcing msme to save such amount because they earn meager amount and of that also they have to save something so that will be like forcing them to save Uh, but still it would be useful for them only mm -hmm. another measure can be small business insurance scheme yes this is very important insurance sector penetration in india is uh, very meager very miserable and we need to increase the insurance because that would uh, in in reality lead to what that will in reality lead to more inclusiveness in our society right okay there are lessons to be learned from the crop insurance scheme there are more than 6.5 million msme in the country and there is a has huge market potential for insurance sector so there are about 6.5 million msmes and look what is the potential for insurance sector here if it is tapped properly in order to encourage firms to invest in such large insurance scheme the government must pay an initial premium or fraction of the premium on behalf of such enterprises particularly micro enterprises and their own account enterprise right so government should uh, hand hold them in the beginning and show them the way and then they can go the way right gaps in the budget okay the budget failed to bring any plan idea that makes msme sector more resilient yes this is true because we are in the amrit kal for next 25 years and we need to do something to get the amrit out of the sagar right the proposed financial measures suggested above namely as uncertainty corpus fund for small businesses and the small businesses insurance scheme can help msme become resilient and sustain their growth during business uncertainties caused by economic shocks it could enable small farm firms to meet their working capital requirement in particular retaining their workforce and investing in new technologies or new businesses opportunity to cope with uncertainties in term of planning msme can be on par with large firms it would boost the confidence of small firms during normal business time and make them more competitive by giving them a sense of security in times of abnormal business cycle it would be of great help to government of government in a time of crisis as government can focus on addressing demand issue 
which is one of the biggest challenge faced by economy during the shock okay so this is a very good article we got to understand many things about msme although most of the thing we already knew but yes it is a very good refresher course and the things that they have to, uh, that they have uh, said uh, or they have proposed is very very good not unique but yes we we knew this is re required but yes i got the name at least the uncertainty corpus fund for small businesses and small business insurance scheme right so these two ideas yes can be written in examination if you feel so i feel that they are good to be written and it's up to you to write them and to implement them in your answers right so with this we are done with this article now let's move to the next page state of adolescent learning Asar highlights the dismal picture of online education. Okay. Over the last few decades, there has been a massive government drive to push for universal enrollment, extending to secondary as well as primary school children. Successive annual status of education report have shown that this drive has been largely successful for both age group with higher enrollment rate even during the pandemic. Despite two years of COVID-related school closure, the increase is in unenrolled 11 to 14 years old has been marginal. While the number of out of schools has actually fallen. Fine. So, ASA report says what? Despite two years of COVID related school closure, the increase in enrollment of 11 to 14 years has been marginal. Okay. So, people who under enrolled from 11 to 14 years has been marginal. While number of schools, out of schools in 15 to 16 years, uh, people has been actually fallen for both boys and girls. So, it has fallen for both of them. This indicates that school has been able to retain children beyond primary school. This is remarkable because children are now enrolled beyond the age of compulsory education and enrollment rate shows almost no gender disparity. But the enrollment is only one of the pieces of the puzzle. And yes, the author is correct with respect to this. It is actually only one of the pieces of the puzzle. The entire education puzzle comprises of many things including teacher to student ratio, the infrastructure, the availability of midday meal nutrition, the learning capabilities. Right, many many things are there out of which enrollment ratio is one of them. Absence of formal learning. Although the efforts have been made by parents, teachers and government, learning at home through online education during pandemic has been far from successful for those children. Asa 2020 and 2021 brought to light a dismal picture, a dismal picture of access to technology based learning resources. Why? This is, this is because of the phenomena of digital divide in India, right? People are not very tech friendly. Why? Because they don't have the accessibility of technology from uh, early ages and due to lack of that knowledge, there is a digital divide in our country. Even though over 70% of children in class 9 to 12 has a smartphone at home, only 35% of them can use it for studies at all times, while 17% of them could not use it at all. In absence of formal schooling, family members often assume the task of teaching. The ASA report shows how adolescents did not fare well. Older children receive less learning supports as compared to younger ones. Yes, obviously. Additionally, some children, so this can be written. Older children receive less learning supports as compared to younger ones because the family member, in absence of formal schooling, the family member often assume the task of teaching, right? Additionally, some children, especially older girls, face competitive demands due to financial stress and increased requirement of care work at home, fine. So, especially older girls, what happened? Two things. Competitive demand due to financial stress and increased enrollment for care work at home. This is a very important point. Even in 2017, Asar has reported that almost 90% of the female youth of 14 to 18 did housework on daily basis compared to three-fourths of the male youth. According to Build Back Better report by UNICEF, school closure exacerbated girls and women's unpaid care work. Okay, So, closure of school led to what? Increase in the girls and women's unpaid care work, limiting their time available to learn at home. During COVID-19, girls might have had to replace the work done by missing caregiver or by or simply because of the gender expected gendered expectations. Okay. Asar in 2021 hints the same. When asked if any girl in the household above 12 years of age has started helping out more with her household chores since the lockdown, most almost two thirds of the respondent reported in an affirmative way. In all the age categories, girls were most likely than boys to be taking on additional burdens. Oh yes, this is correct. For example, about three quarters of 15-year-old girls have started helping out more with chores uh, since lockdown, a figure which is 10% point higher than 15-year-old boy. Gender disparity. Gender disparity at home may be may have been aggravated in the pandemic, but it is not, not new. 
Assert 2017 has found that 14 to 18 year old youth aspiration aspirations were gendered, with most male mentioning army, police, and engineer, while female youth, teacher, doctor, nurse as their occupation. This kind of work, the kind of work children did during lockdown, showed that they are exposed to general ex gendered expectations from younger age. A study using ASER, a study using ASER, Indian Human Development Survey and National Family Health Survey data suggest that long before the pandemic, gender disparity has started spilling over into learning outcomes as well. So, okay, so long before pandemic, gender disparity has started spilling over to learning outcomes as well. And this has been a phenomena since the advent of education itself. The study found that female dis disadvantage persists in mathematics learning outcome over last decade and shows no sign of disappearing. The study correlates the finding with the regressive household practices that limits the autonomy of women and finds that female disadvantage in mathematics learning is higher when where, where there is higher prevalence of such practice. Okay, I don't find it very appealing to write an examination because this is a kind of thing that we are assuming although a small set of data may reveal that but saying this for entire country won't be very positive thing. Okay, don't write it. Of all the points to an uh, all of these points to an eminent need to integrate gender sensitization okay gender sensitization modules into curricula for adolescence education okay school based gender sensitization program can play a transmit transformative role in ensuring that all children get an equitable environment to grow okay so the gender sensitization program should be what it should be school based right so that the the students from early age only are sensitized towards the other gender not only males are sensitized, sensitized towards female but the reverse is also done so that what happens so that a better and inclusive society is possible for example an all attitude change program in haryana run by breakthrough and evaluated by abdul latif jamil poverty action lab showed promising results with participants exhibiting general equitable behaviors even two years after the program ended. It was centered around the interactive classroom discussions about gender equality and in, second, in secondary schools. Scaling up the programs for all schools and states could help bring about more gender progressive views among communities. With school reopening, a gender equitable environment for their growth should be prioritized, right? So we are in the phase of what? Reopening of schools. So a gender equitable environment should be on the top priority right the world begin as the world begins to recover from effects of pandemic this is an opportunity to rebuild better on which should be not be missed okay so this is an opportunity to uh, rebuild our educational infrastructure in a more better and inclusive way fine okay so let's move on to the next one let's see what else is left uh, so on this page uh, nothing is left Let's move on to the next page. Amending the Weapons of Mass Destruction Act. What were the stipulations under the act earlier in 2005? Why did an amendment, amendment became necessary? Let's see. On April 26, 2022, Weapons of Mass Destruction and their Delivery System, Prohibition of Unlawful Activities Amendment Bill was passed by Lok Sabha. Okay. The primary objective of the act was to provide an integrated and overarching legislation on prohibiting unlawful activities in relation to all three types of WMD, the delivery system and related materials, equipment and technologies, right? The amendment expands the scope to include prohibition of financing and of any activity related to WMD and their delivery system. Additionally, to prevent acts of terrorism that involve WMD or their delivery system, a network of national and international measures in which all nation states are equally invested is required. So what is saying, what this uh, paragraph or, or this article wants to convey that, okay, we have this thing in line, we have this amendment in line, but that is not enough. The entire world, the entire global citizenry should come together, the entire world government should come together to curb these things, right? Okay. Uh, what was the purpose of original WMD Act came in 2005. Its primary objective was to provide an integrated and overarching legislation on pro prohibiting unlawful activities in relation to all three types of WMD, the delivery system and related materials, equipment, etc. It instituted penalties and all those things. Okay, the act was passed to meet the international obligation enforced by UN Security Council Resolution 1540 in 2004. Uh -huh. So, anything else? Let me see. 
why was this amendment necessary fine fine these things are okay it was it became anachronistic so it was necessary now what more should india do internationally it should be done uh, international cooperation and all those things okay what is this could the amendment become troublesome for to people on account of mistaken identity let's read it in the discussion on bill in parliament some member expressed concern on whether the new legislation could make existing business entities or people in the specific sector accept susceptible to case of mistaken identity the external affairs minister however assured the house that such chances were minimal since identification of concerned individual would be based on long list of specific okay fine give it a read uh, the news is still in building phase we'll see how it unfolds as the discussions goes on goes in rajya sabha and so on and i think one more article will come on this that would be more enriching i in my opinion right this is just a prelude to things that may happen on in the near future okay so let's see the next news or the next uh, explainer on making kannada mandatory for ug courses can kannada be prescribed as a mandatory language under national education policy 2020 how has the center reacted okay on april 6 the high court of karnataka stays the implementation of two order issued by the state government making kannada a compulsory language for ug courses as per government order issued by the state education department student joining ug courses in karnataka from academic year 2021 2022 were required to study kannada as compulsory language for first four semesters the central government clarified to the court that there is no mention of any compulsory language in 2020 ndp okay so this was the stand just know it let's see how it unfolds but for time now it is not unfolded now careers the art and science of good is interview okay so i'll make a separate video on it right so that it becomes easy for you to search in the playlist okay there has been one more article i'll i'll combine both of them together so that uh, it becomes a more easy and comprehensive thing right so with this i think we have we are done with it today's newspaper let me let me see if anything else is left no so with this we come to end of today's analysis right so i hope you like it okay so friends i really hope that you like this video if you like this video give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe our channel and share this video with your friend also keep studying hard keep following your dreams and keep tuned to our channel comment below for any suggestion till then goodbye good luck keep studying hard and follow your dreams